Hello and welcome to another edition of the Mind Expanse Media Training Tutorial. Today we're going to focus on Microsoft Office Word. Um, that's a very popular word processing program. There have been a few changes to it, um, starting with Microsoft Office 2007. Uh, 2010 looks very much the same. Uh, there's just a few of more features into it that weren't in 2007, and uh, I'll briefly talk about those. So, uh, once you open up Word, you're going to see that it's pretty much a visual environment you're looking at, and we have these uh, tabs at the top: Home, Insert, Page Layouts, References, Mailings, Review, and View. We're probably going to focus on the first three tabs for this tutorial because the other ones get into a lot more other items that you probably don't need to necessarily uh, work. Uh, we may talk about view a little bit, but you'll see that we've got a plain blinking cursor going on on the page and I changed my settings here so I have a ruler. You'll notice the rulers here. If I hit ruler, it disappears. Um, if I click ruler again, it comes on. Uh, if I was doing something with images I could do grid lines so I can kind of help line things up a little bit maybe uh, for some design purposes okay and then the navigation pane would just give me like a navigation within that um, so let's take a look at what we have here we have the clipboard now it used to be you had to actually go into the menu system to find the clipboard and make that active they've kind of put that here now so we actually have it and one of the nice features is we have some different options here we can keep the source formatting we can keep this we can keep that format which is just text or we can go into the options oops sorry about that we can actually go into the options here of paste special and we can do as HTML in this case unformatted text or unitext code um, and that's because I had actually copied something earlier into as you saw the contact mine expanse that was actually the text that it was using as a reference for choosing what it wants to do Okay, so those are the typical things, and of course if I just a normal paste, I get everything. See how there's a hyperlink to this? I get everything in that. And then the undo buttons are up here. And um, in addition to this stuff, we can actually customize these up here, which I'll talk about in a little bit. So now we have all of our font options here. Um, and our font options are, you know, nicely grouped together for us. So if I want to change my font, which by, is Calibri, by default in Cambria usually, but Cambria is the one that they're actually using for headings and Calibri's for body. Um, I've actually gone through and customized mine to be Times New Roman instead of starting with that. Um, but if you open yours up, don't be surprised if you see Cambria or Calibri as you're typing. And I changed my font to 12 from 11, which is by default. Okay. Um, we can also grow our font and we can shrink our font, much like what we did in 2007. We have the option of doing a sentence case, lowercase, uppercase, capitalize each word, or we can toggle so we have an uppercase, lowercase grouping in there. Um, so if I put in here the typical hello, if I could type here today, hello world, okay, and I was to just highlight that by left mouse clicking, I could hover over these usually and see what's going on in some instances, but this particular case I can't. So I'm just going to go ahead and click it so you can see what happens. Notice that the first letters now, because they were capital, switched and the other ones that were lowercase became capital. And I'm just doing control Z to undo that. Um, and so if I want to do all capitalize each word, nothing's going to happen because it's already capitalized. If I want to do uppercase, it makes every one of the letters uppercase. Lowercase, it'll change everything to lowercase. And then we have the normal sentence text. And notice that it dropped the casing on the second word here to lower from the, the actual capital. Okay, so those are some quick overviews of that. Now we have bold, italicized, and we have the underline. And we have different options in here for underlining. So I could choose something a little different right from this menu without having to really go into any special menus. Then we have strike through. So if I was to take this word, world, and click the strike through, we'll go ahead and put a line through it press it again, it'll take it away. Um, those of you that may need something for math or you've seen math, I can actually click on this and actually get a subscript. You'll notice that it drops it lower than the actual text itself. Um, I can also do an upper script, okay, um, and, and I can also go back to sentence case up here. I should be able to, right? 
If not, then you click that again. Okay. Now, over here we have the ability to make words have a glow option. Uh, glowing is pretty interesting. Um, you really can't see it here because of what it is. So let me just knock this down a few lines so you can actually see what's going on. Um, but if I drop this down and I hover over it, I get these live previews. And these live previews kind of give me an ability to see what it's going to look like ahead of time. Um, you'll notice that the, the preset ones are here. I also have the ability to go into shadowing and I can add shadows to it which may be difficult for you to see. Um, I can also go into outlines so I can actually change the outline by hovering over these. I can see it. I can do reflections which will actually kind of see at the bottom as it changes. It'll make a reflection kind of like if it's sitting on a glass table. And then I have these glows so I can go in and I can do some glows. So these are all really cool features you can use and they all have their own place and time to be used. Um, but if you're actually creating something that you were going to uh, distribute, you might want to do that. And of course, then we have the, the highlight function here. Um, let's say I pick blue. I can't read it. Um, but then I decide, you know what? I don't want that. A lot of people I can't figure out how to get highlight off. Um, it's relatively simple in this version. You just drop this down and say no color. Okay, but make sure that you've actually selected it first. Okay, so let me just uh, do stop highlighting. I'm going to go through here. I'm going to select this. I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to say no color. Okay, before it was in highlight mode when I actually did it and that wouldn't let me actually select that. So sometimes that stuff will happen. It will actually catch you off guard. And then we have the ability to go in here and change our font colors, much like what we did a minute ago with the glow options. Okay. And of course we can use any combination of these. Um, then we have the ability, and I'm going to go down here and I'm going to add just do this so you can see what's going on. Um, I can actually click in front of here and drop this down and start picking some of these. Um, there's a defined new bullet which would be an entirely different uh, tutorial separate from this, but there's a way to make your own personalized bullets. Um, and then of course I could go over here and do my numberings. So if I was doing outlines or I wanted to make something stand out with ABC or sub ABC and so forth, notice that it actually indents this for me. When I actually go here it switches these for me, okay, based on that. And then I can actually make contact lists. So if I was actually going to be doing, you know, a list for something or headings and so forth, maybe even an outline, uh, an index, something like that, I could use one of these. Um, then we have the ability to actually um, let me increase it first so I can increase my indent which pushes it in and I can decrease it which pushes it back to the left okay so I this one pushes it to the right basically like tab this one pushes it to the left um, now that's good in a list when we have a long list because I can actually take and move that information in and out so it's more easily read then there's a sort function which you know isn't really used unless you've got a lot of data um, and then there's this hide function uh, a lot of people will click on the hide function uh, just so they can see where they're at. Like say, for instance, if I went in here and did some kind of a, uh, a page break, uh, it'll tell me I did a page break. And sometimes people will be in here, they won't see that page break, and they're trying to figure out why nothing fits on the page. Um, so um, you also see I hit enter here. That makes that little arrow. It goes to the left, kind of the hook. That means that there's. I actually went and hit enter. So it kind of gives you the idea of that. And of course, we have our less justify. Our, you know, our center or right justify and then just plain justify which pretty much evenly distributes your text on the page um, sometimes it'll put huge gaps between your words so it really depends on uh, what you're doing and then we have this ability to change our line spacing uh, by default it generally will throw us at 1.15 uh, anybody who's writing research papers these days for say college uh, the most everything is going to be 2.0 now notice that looks a little weird right now so I'm going to actually take the hide function off and then I'm going to bring this up um, and then I'm going to just select all my text so I'm going to do control A and I'm going to drop this down and I'm going to tell it change to 2.0 now I'm at 120 percent if I actually shrink this down to 200 it'll be much smaller I mean to 100 sorry and I hit enter that's double space believe it or not okay but there is another option in here we we have to consider and that's the spacing that we have before or after words so sometimes you may need to adjust that and you can also set these up as defaults as well 
Um, then we have shading again. I can actually add shading to it, so I can actually change it and add colors and so forth to it. Um, and then we have the borders and shading. So if I wanted to put borders around it, um, let's say I want to put a square box, I could do that. Okay. So those are again that could be another entire tutorial by itself. Okay. And then we have some of these that are automatically available to us to tell us titles, headings, heading one, subtitles. If I click the little arrow here, I have a submenu with even more items in it. I can create my own and actually say save it. So if there's something I want to use on a regular basis on my job, I could do that. Um, I could clear the formatting, anything that's on it. So right now all the formatting's off. You'll notice that moved up because I had some formatting on there. Okay, and then I could change my styles um, by changing the way it looks color-wise and so forth if I have been doing something really special. Okay, and then I have my spacings. Notice if I roll over these, it actually has double built in. Okay, they, they are all different, so it depends on what you need. And then I have the find and replace. Um, essentially, find is really good. If I was to click that, I could type in the box, you know, hello is what I'm looking for. See, it's highlighting it for me. Um, but let's say I, instead of just finding a word in a document, I want to replace it. So I'm going to actually click replace and I'm going to say find world and I'm going to say replace with cruel. Okay, and I'm going to say replace. Now that's only going to replace it once, but if I say replace all, it will search the entire document and actually replace it. The really nice thing about that is, let's say you forgot a contract that you're using, and you have a a hold, holding value in there of say company name. You can actually say find company name, and that's your find what, and replace it with whatever company name you need, and it'll replace them all throughout your documents. So I went ahead and said replace all. It says it's reached the end. Do you want to continue? Obviously, there's no more here, but if I said yes, it would continue searching at the top. Okay and I can close that to get rid of it. Okay, And then we have the ability to do a select all, select objects, and similar formatting. Okay, So all that falls underneath the first tab. Now underneath insert we have a lot of items. Okay, And in there we have a cover page, blank page, page breaks. Uh, we have a table if I needed to insert tables. I could insert a picture from my hard drive. I could go to clip art and insert a picture from clip art. And then we have shapes. And underneath here, there's some really cool things you can do with this. Um, I like to actually create little characters and so forth using these drawing tools that are available in here. It's actually pretty powerful. Um, and I'll do another tutorial for flyers down the road, and then you'll actually see how some of that stuff can be put to use. Then we have smart art, which, if I click that, you'll see is really good for like businesses if you're putting something together for. A report or a hierarchy of showing how the you know leadership or management is functioning and so forth pyramids if you're doing something for food possibly um, you know pictures and so forth so there's a lot of options in there and then we have the ability to insert a chart which will actually open up Excel and I can put some values in and do it uh, one of the new features is in 2010 that wasn't in 2007 is this little guy here it's called screenshot so if I actually go down here and we'll go underneath that and I go here and say I want screen clipping okay I can actually come up and do some kind of a clipping like that and it pulls it right in which is really cool okay it could be a very useful feature but notice it's whatever is directly underneath you can't actually do it in Word itself okay um, and it likes to jump around so I have to go back and click on the tab for insert um, and by the way this is called the ribbon up here that's what they tend to call it because it's a lot of items on it um, we could also go and insert a hyperlink in if we were doing some kind of a document or want to link to another document outside of this uh, for some more information, like maybe I have a PDF or something that's got something I want somebody to be able to see. Um, and then I can bookmark it. Um, I can cross-reference. Um, my header and footers, they're automatically built in. Um, I personally like to just simply go up in the top and double-click and I get into my header so I can type what I want manually double click again outside of that underneath and if I want to do it down in my footer I can double click that too okay um, and sometimes it won't do it till I actually have a second page in there okay um, so if I go to footer you know it's gonna want to do that if I go into here and double click and now I can get to it because it's actually been it detected there's one there basically um, the different first page, odd and even, and so forth, 
Uh, the different first page is real important for people, again, who are writing papers for college. Uh, they need to have a cover page on it, but they don't want a page number on it, which is usually standard. And maybe they need to put a running header for doing APA or something. Um, you would check that off, and then the numbering would actually start on the second page, and you wouldn't have it on the next one. Uh, but the design tabs will pop up sometimes depending upon what we're doing. I can do headers, footers, I can insert a page number, and I have all kinds of options. Date and time, something called quick parts, I can actually insert different things like the you know, file names, company email, address, all that stuff. Anything that's actually been input in at some point. I can insert a picture in my footer, clip art, I can switch to the headers and so forth, and I can change my headers from top to bottoms and then I can click here to close it. Okay. Um, and again, page numbers is here as well if I need to insert it. Um, text boxes are really cool. They have some pre-formatted ones. Generally, I just select the first one. It will dummy it up. Uh, but the nice thing is I can move those around anywhere on the page. So if I'm trying to put something specifically in a location, a text box is probably the way to go. You'll notice that there's some format that's come up here. And then we have the ability for shape fills and the shape outlines. Um, let's say I don't want a box around it, I can say no outline, for instance, and when I click off, it's not there. Otherwise, if I click off, it's got a square. And of course, if I just type in here, I can actually replace my data in there. Okay, so um, underneath the Insert tab, we also have the ability to do the quick parts again, and then we have the word art, which is standard in all your words. If I was to cover one of these, it, sometimes works sometimes doesn't um, but I can actually roll over this and sometimes I can see what it's going to look like or I just have to click it to see but it will take that word if I highlight it and convert it into a word art then of course under format I have the ability to change all kinds of things I can add more lines to it make it stand out I can change the weight of the lines and so forth so um, there's a lot of cool features in here to play around with again that's an advanced tutorial. I'm just trying to give you the, the basics of what's going on in here and where to find things. Um, signature lines, if I have a signature set up somewhere in my email, then I can actually use that. Um, an object, um, I can insert all kinds of things into here. Uh, you know, anything that's installed on my computer, basically it will actually pull up. Then I can say create from file, I can browse to something. Um, let's say I, again, we were doing something with a chart and I wanted that chart to actually uh, be linked into the document. I could say link it to the file so when I make a change in the Excel spreadsheet for instance it will update the information in my Word document as long as they're connected and they're not like separated you know, on different servers or different computers. Um, otherwise I wouldn't check that if I just want it to stay static in it. Um, okay, And then we have the equations. We have the ability to create equations and so forth in here. That's another whole tutorial in itself. Then we have some common symbols, copyright, registered trademarks, infinity, pi, you know, beta, those types of things. Okay, mu, okay, sum. So there's a lot of different things in here that are already pre-built for us, so we don't have to think about it. And then underneath page layouts, we have themes that we can apply to a page. So if I was to go over it, you'll see how the font's kind of changing color on there. Okay, and I can play around with some of these. These, again, are or effects that I could do and so forth. Um, underneath my margins I can change them. Uh, they give us the half inch margins all the way around now pretty much. The 0.5 in, is not really half but we think of half. Uh, 0.5 and then we have custom margins. If I click on that I can go in and actually change the top left and gutters usually are zero unless we're doing something special. And then I can actually tell it I only want to be on this page forward or this whole document. Okay, meaning every page I do. Okay, And then we have the page orientations, portrait, landscape. If I hit landscape, uh, you'll see it widened out. It's now just rotated the paper 90 degrees. Um, and we'll switch that back. And then I can pick the size of paper that I'm actually working with. Um, if I was working with legal documents, I'd want to make sure I change that to a legal document that's actually in the list here. Okay, Maybe 14, 8.5 by 14. Um, then I can insert columns, one, two, three, four, and right, and then I can go to more columns, so I have even more control uh, of setting that, and again, that's another whole topic, um, but it's just, that's where it's located. Um, I can do my page breaks here, depending upon what I'm doing. Uh, if I was making a brochure, then I probably would 
want to you know do a column break so it actually breaks it to the next one at the top um, you got to be real careful with those because sometimes it makes things crazy um, I can do you know my line numbers you'll notice that I'm actually got numbers running down every line on here when I turn that on um, don't really need that unless you got a long list of stuff um, hyphenation you know automatic or none or manual so I can control if it breaks a word that's in two parts uh, watermarks I can actually add something in here so it's in the background it says do not copy confidential and I can do a custom one uh, where I can actually type whatever I want to be in there so if it's a text I can type it in here put it hey do not copy this you know those types of things um, and then we have page borders which we can just click on and that's going to make a standard you know square box and I'll shrink this down so you can see it all um, or I can go to page borders and drop this down and get some artwork that's in here one of my favorites is like if you're doing a, a Hawaii flyer is to pick the palm trees and then it puts that around um, and then we can change the indents and the spacing before and after this is what I was talking about earlier with the double space you might want to change it to zero it depends on the settings that somebody tells you um, and then we have this is primarily for pictures so if I was to insert um, a clip art let's say let's see the internet let's just insert this um, by default you can't really do anything with it so the trick is to go to text wrap and say in front or behind text and then I can move that anywhere okay um, and then we have the ability to align so if I want to click on that I could say you know align to center it will actually do that for me align to middle it will actually do that for me and then I can change my pictures width right here and I can also crop um, this picture so if I only wanted to have just this computer and nothing else really around it I could do that and then click off of it and now I've actually took that picture and moved it and because I put the settings to move it to center I no longer have the ability to move it where I want okay so I actually went back and turned on the in front of text again um, so under that, that that's pretty much it um, this is a real quick overview of some of the features in it uh, like I said it's focused on the first three tabs there's a lot more going on um, if we drop this down we have the ability to put things on here uh, that we can actually customize it things we use on a regular basis if you like to email documents straight without having to go into your Outlook or another program you can do that if you know whatever you're gonna print is ready to go you can do a quick print so all you gotta do is hit print and it'll pop an icon up here for us um, same thing if I actually undo these check marks um, same thing spelling grammar I can put up here so I can actually click that you'll notice that the ABC popped up here for spelling which is also F7 um, so there's a lot of things we can do um, in there and it's all by customization of what you what you really need it for but anyway I hope this helps a little bit like I said this was a real quick overview um, and my name's Leith, and until next time, uh, be sure to head over to our main website at Mind Expanse Media Training, okay, which is at mindexpanse.com. That's with an X, and uh, hope to see you soon.